I want to show you an example of what it looks like when I outline at scene level because I'm talking about the detailed, you know, scene by scene brainstorming and how I do that. I've done videos recently about how I like outline the book as a whole and I'll link these videos below about how I do that in my vlog where I actually like was doing that on camera. But what I haven't shown you is how I outline at the scene level and I do what I call bullet point outlining. It's something that I say all the time. I've talked about it in tons of my like writing vlogs and pretty much every time I talk about it, people are like, well, what is that? What does that actually look like? What does that mean? And it's so simple. It is just literally making a bullet point list of every single thought, idea, possibility that comes to mind. It's sort of like a free flow brain dump of everything that's coming to you. And there's no perfectionist and it's in this bullet point format where you just like this might happen okay and then this might happen don't forget this character maybe this bit of dialogue oh i like the idea of this what if that happened here's a question you know like this just literally whatever comes to mind you write it down and there's two purposes to it <laughs> the first one is that it gets rid of the perfectionism spirit which a lot of us have where if i sit there in front of a document ready to actually write a first line or a first paragraph whatever then i will sit there overthinking it and instead I can go into this brainstorming mode or bullet point outlining mode and start just thinking one by one by one. Oh, maybe this happens. What if that happens? Here's a really crappy bit of dialogue. Figure out how to make it better later, and it just removes that perfectionism. So that's the first reason it's awesome. But the second reason that it is so amazing and I love it so much is because when I do discovery writing, aka just sitting down to write a scene with no real idea of what's going to be in it prior to starting besides maybe one or two characters and maybe they're in this location. In that sort of situation, it could take me an hour to write a couple hundred words. It could. It could go faster, but usually it's pretty slow. Versus when I do a bullet point outline of that scene prior to writing it, I just whip through the scene so fast. It's amazing. I just feel like I know exactly what comes next. I've already kind of gone through the steps of picturing it. So now in writer mode, when I'm actually doing the writing itself, I'm just describing what I've seen. And it's just this awesome, fast writing speed that I absolutely love. And I can literally double, if not triple, my word count in in the same amount of time. So that's why it's awesome. But I still feel like a lot of people have asked me what it looks like. And so the other day, I was actually writing the third book in my series, The Queen's Rise, called The Secret curse and I was actually doing it. I had actually written the bullet point outline and I stopped and I went, I think I should screen record this and just talk about it a little bit. So I want to go back in time and show you that clip. And just FYI, there are tiny, tiny, tiny spoilers, but no huge spoilers for the series. It shouldn't be a big deal. But if you really, really hate seeing anything before it's done or before having read the other books, then don't watch this part. I'm just warning you now, but don't worry. There's nothing, you know, huge that's going to be spoiled even though this is the third book it's just a fun little scene in i believe the fun and games beat <laughs> of the story okay let's go back in time and watch that clip now so what i'm doing here is i got a little bit stuck and i decided to brainstorm in more specific detail the next scene that was coming up so you can see here i wrote maybe she shifts now into something dangerous and attacks them surprising them and later on i actually came back and i added maybe one of them even hurts her a little bit like i actually um had continued on writing all of this and then i came back and added this bullet point later it's like maybe one of them even hurts her so then later on this guy that she's gonna run into is gonna have to help her with her wound and they might have a cute moment and then I put well maybe let's see is she successful so it's basically following the chain of events I'm like okay if she attacks these people who are holding her captive is she successful or is she not well maybe she is successful but then this guy again this is a little bit of a love triangle situation I'm really enjoying that maybe he comes through the door and you know we want to see that he is good so maybe he nearly captures her but she's also good so she escapes by shifting I put hard like as in really fast going through the like a crack as a bug so sneaky I like to show that she's sneaky the Han of a day are actually really fast as well so maybe to get away from them she has to shift into a bird and fly away and of course all the shifting is pushing her hard and exhausting her so I'm writing all these notes to myself to make sure I don't forget as well but then I also was like well okay she can't fly far though because you know she's doesn't have the muscles to sustain a long flight so that would mean she's forced to land not too far away so I'm just kind of like following things through the, to the conclusion and then I added this in later just like I did with 
this about the wound. Well, if she's wounded, then maybe the other reason she lands is because she's also injured. And then you can see how I have other notes that I throw in there. They're not necessarily in order, but I'm like, okay, I don't want to forget. Maybe show those mountains that she wondered about at some point. You'll see when you read the story. And then I also was like, well, okay, she's trying to find a Daleth, which is a portal between the human world and the Jenny world. And that's how she's got to get home. So we need to have her at some point remember like, oh yeah, maybe there's a Daleth in the area or like I haven't actually figured this out. So I'm like, or maybe she thinks so, but she can't remember for sure. So at some point I need to make sure she thinks about trying to find it. I don't want to forget. And then coming back to like the chain of events. Well, what would be the natural next thing is this guy would come looking for her. And so I decided, well, maybe um, she sees him coming. So she shifts again. And of course it's wearing her out. And I just continue on brainstorming like this. Well, okay. So she realizes she can outwit him by changing forms, doing things he can't do, but maybe he can somehow like track her by magic. You can see, I, I don't actually know. Does that work? You know, I got to think on it more. And right now I'm thinking out loud. I'm like, I should probably put in a note. How come the others aren't with Bijan? How come they're not able to track her as well? Does he tell them to wait and go off alone maybe or does he tell them to search in a different direction so it's something I need to brainstorm and make sure I don't forget so I'm just literally writing notes to myself okay what comes next so you can see how I just go on and on like this this was one of my really long brainstorming bits where I was like I kept getting ideas I kept being like oh I really like this you know maybe this will happen maybe he'll call her out maybe they do attempt to fight I really like this idea so I kind of brainstormed that more like maybe mid fight she's so exhausted that she has to snap back to her Jenny form because otherwise she's not going to be able to anymore. She doesn't want to be stuck. And then they have kind of like a cute little he's on top of her. So you can see I brainstormed like a phrase that he might say. And then sometimes I don't really know the details, but I brainstorm like how would he kind of like hunch that would look very dragon-like because the Hanabadae are based on dragons. Here's another example of I don't want him to actually say taxing you because that's kind of a modern word. I, I want to think of a different way to say this, but basically he'll be like, I knew you were exhausted or I knew you couldn't and keep shifting and keep it up etc and then some other possible things that he and she might say and they keep talking and that's where I stopped as you can see here because I got excited to write this and I was like okay let's go back all the way to the top and then what I'll do is I'll start right here and as I write this section once I've written it where she does shift she does something dangerous attacks them this is probably going to end up being like four or five paragraphs and once I finish writing it I'll delete it and then once I write this section I'll delete it and then once I write this section and so on I'll delete it as I go and if I skip around like maybe I don't do this right away then I'll go on to this section and delete it while I leave the note here that hasn't been completed yet. So that's just a little sneak peek at how I do bullet point outlines. I hope you enjoyed it. It's super fun for me to outline a scene in detail like this and it really really helps me write a lot faster because otherwise I'm writing something like this and it just takes me forever and while I love discovery writing stuff like this sometimes I just want to write really fast and if I have a bullet point outline like this I can just whip through it and it makes my writing so much faster and I can write twice as fast if I have something like this to go off of. So I hope this was fun for you to see and let me know what you think of it. Okay, that's a real life example of what my bullet point outlining process actually looks like. I hope that that gave you a really good picture of it, but I know that some of you will be like, well, how does that transfer over into the actual writing process? What does that look like? And so just for kicks, the very next day after I had recorded my screen, of the bullet point outline. I was writing that scene. I was going to the writer mode and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna record my screen again. And so just FYI, it was over a few thousand words in about 25 minutes, but I'm gonna give you the fast replay to watch now in case you're curious. So watch closely and you'll notice how I am writing based on one specific bullet point usually until I feel that I've completed everything that that bullet point encompasses. And then I delete that note and I move on to the next one. Or sometimes I skip it and I come back depending on what I'm in the mood to do. Sometimes my bullet point outlining isn't in linear or is it chronological order. And so... <laughs> Zion is in the next room playing. I just wanted to record this quick and he is contributing. <laughs> so anyway, then I move on to the next bullet point note and I just keep going through them like that, deleting them as they are completed. And like I said earlier in the video, this is just my first draft. So please do not judge my writing too harshly. I'm not afraid to share a first draft to show you just how messy and sometimes not so great it can be. But just know that my books do go through many, many rounds of edits to clean them up 
after I write these first drafts. And so while you're watching this, I also wanna point out that you don't have to do this bullet point outlining process on a computer either. Sometimes I'll use a computer, but sometimes I'll use a notebook. It really doesn't matter what tools you use so long as you allow yourself to do a sort of free flow brain dump of all the ideas that come to you and you don't worry about being perfect. good comparison that I have heard before is something called morning pages. So that is where you wake up in the morning to journal and you literally journal as thoughts come to you. You just put everything that you think on the page without any worry about making it make sense. And it's really similar to that here with the bullet point outline. You're just getting all possible ideas out of your head and onto paper or onto a computer in some way, shape or form so that you can then kind of sift through it and see what are the actual good ideas that you could work with here. A lot of times my bullet point outlining will include questions or just maybe this happens or maybe that happens, sort of like an ABC option format. And if you're really struggling to figure out where to start, just start the way you would with morning pages where you're like, I don't really know what's gonna happen in this scene. Maybe I will bring in this character or maybe I feel like having it start with a love scene. I don't know, whatever, you get the idea. Just follow the train of thought and see where it leads you. You could start to randomly come up with dialogue or you could focus on the location, or you could focus on the characters, or you could go back and forth between all different kinds of things. It's just asking questions, coming up with answers, and yeah, literally just brainstorming. And I guess you don't even need the bullet points technically, but I think that's sort of my way of separating the thoughts and making sure that I have more, I guess, bite-sized things to work on and write versus one big, long, five pages train of thought. I think that'd be a little overwhelming. So I guess that's really the only purpose for the bullet points is it's usually just like one or two sentences or like a concise idea or thought or maybe a bit of dialogue. And then when it's something new or the idea shifts to the next thing, that's when I would do a new bullet point. Again, the reason this is so awesome is that it helps you to not have those speed bumps of getting stuck in the middle of a scene where you're like, oh, I actually don't know which way a character would go. If they'd go left or right, 
I don't know what they'll do after they go right, then I'm not sure who they talk to, who do they run into. You've already done all of the brainstorming, so now, like I said, you're just describing everything that you've already envisioned and imagined. It's separating the imagination part of the process from the writing part of the process, and I think it helps me actually write better as well because I've already done the work of brainstorming, so then I can think of cool ways to say what I'm seeing in my head, if that makes sense. Keep in mind that things might still change. I still run into fun surprises. I still deviate from my bullet point outline. It is not a set in stone outline to me. It's just a brainstorming process that kind of jogs new ideas that I might not have considered and makes the writing process itself so much faster. All right, I gotta go take care of this cute kid. So I will talk to you guys in the next video, but I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you've ever tried something like this or if this is brand new and you're excited to try it. And I hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye. It started.